How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is still topic five. This is volume number six and this is the last one in the topic five series. This is the one where we look at bond enthalpies. Make sure you got your calculator. Make sure you got your data book for this one. Let's go. Okay, topic 5.3, what are bond enthalpies? We look at bond forming and bond breaking. We do some calculations with bond enthalpies and then we talk about bond strength in ozone. The IB understandings focus around bond enthalpy and then our use of bond enthalpy. And then the last thing is to explain the strength of the bond in ozone and oxygen and it's important in the atmosphere. So the definition of a bond enthalpy is the energy needed to break one mole of a bond in a gaseous molecule averaged over a number of similar compounds. Bond breaking is an endothermic process and bond forming is an exothermic process. So here we can see that we have one methane, which has been broken into one carbon atom in the gaseous phase and four hydrogen atoms in the gaseous phase. Now the CH bond enthalpy is given a value of 412 kilojoules per mole. That's because that's been averaged over a number of different compounds. If we have a look at the example in the equation, we could see that four moles of carbon to hydrogen bonds have been broken because there are four carbon to hydrogen bonds and that has taken 1,662 kilojoules. If we divide that by four, we would get the bond enthalpy of 415 kilojoules per mole, which is not what's specified in the data book. That's because that is just the bond enthalpy of methane. It hasn't been averaged over a number of similar compounds. On the energy profile diagram down below, we can see that the first part of the diagram in the yellow, that is the bond breaking section of our enthalpy diagram, where the bonds in the reactants are absorbing energy and being turned into radicals. Once they've been turned into radicals, new bonds in the products can be formed. And that is the exothermic part of the enthalpy level diagram. They're re releasing energy. So we also did this in, a, in an episode uh, a few series ago where we have the enthalpy level diagrams and we talk about the strength of the bond and the stability of the bond. So if we have an exothermic reaction, the reactants have more energy than the products. More energy means less stable. Lower energy means more stable. Just think about that kid on cordial. If you feed him cordial, he's got a lot more energy. He's a lot less stable. So the more energy you have, the less stable the bond. The lower the energy, the more stable the bond. If we talk about strength, if you are more stable, you have a stronger bond. If you are less stable, you have a weaker bond. So higher energy means less stable. That's the kid on red cordial. Lower energy means more stable. That's the kid that has a banana. Okay, the enthalpy of the reaction can be calculated using standard bond enthalpies. Since these are average bond enthalpies, the calculation only gives us an approximate result. So here's an example, the combustion of methane. When we have CH4, it's burnt in excess oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. Now the enthalpy of the reaction when we use bond enthalpies is slightly different to what we've done before. It's bonds broken, take away bonds formed. Whenever you use bond enthalpies, it's broken, take away formed. So the delta H will equal four times the bonds broken in methane, which is four times CH. Then we've got to break the bonds in the oxygen. Well, oxygen, we have two oxygen to oxygen double bonds. Then we take those away from all of the bonds formed in the products. So in carbon dioxide, we have two C double O bonds. Then we need to add that to all of the OH bonds in water. Now we have three waters, which means there's six OH bonds. So we've got to find the enthalpy of six of the OHs. Now when we set this out, we then refer to the table in the data book. So we have four times 414 plus two times 498. They're the bond enthalpies for the bonds broken. And then we can look up the bonds and bond enthalpy for the bonds formed, and we simply put those in as well. I would encourage you to set it out the way that I've done. Look at where you can find the, the bond enthalpies, and then make sure you draw a little diagram to try and help you with the calculation. It can become a little bit tedious, and setting out is vital here. 
So putting all that into your calculator, we get minus 1734 kilojoules per mole. Okay, the second example. If we have ethane, ethane reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. So we need to do the same thing. Bonds broken, take away bonds formed. Okay, what are the bonds broken? Well, we have two C bond C bonds, and then we have 12 C bond H bonds. If you do the drawing, you can see it a lot easier. And then we have seven oxygen oxygen double bonds. We take that away from all of the carbon oxygen double bonds in carbon dioxide. We have four carbon dioxide molecules, so that's eight, and then all of the bonds in the water. Again, we refer to the table to find the bond enthalpies, but the setting out is the most important part. Do the setting out, see the molecules, and then the process becomes a lot easier. Remember that the delta H when we use bond enthalpies is always broken, take away formed. So going through, using table 11, we can go through and put in all of the bond enthalpies. The carbon to carbon bond is 346, the carbon to hydrogen is 414, the O to O double bond is 498. We take that away from all the bonds formed in the products. The carbon oxygen double bond is 804 and the OH bond is 12 times 463. Again, put that number straight into your calculator exactly the way you see it on the screen. That's gonna minimize your chances for error. Minus 2,842 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so here's one where we haven't been given the equation. We haven't been given any information, so it's a little bit harder. Use average bond enthalpies to find the heat of combustion of cyclohexane. Again, if you don't know what cyclohexane, go to the data book, look it up. It's a ring structure. It's a hexane, but there are no double bonds in this ring. So when we go and work out the enthalpies, we've got to look at how many carbon to hydrogen bonds there are. It's combustion, so cyclohexane will form carbon dioxide and water, but we need to go through and balance it, so we can apply CHOD to go through and balance it. Balance for carbon, balance for hydrogen, balance for oxygen. Once we've worked out the reactants and the products, we do bonds broken, take away bonds formed. So here we would have six carbon to carbon bonds, and then we need to work out how many carbon to hydrogen bonds. Well, each carbon will have two, so that will have 12 carbon to hydrogen bonds. And then we have nine oxygen to oxygen double bonds. We take that away from the number of carbon to oxygen double bonds formed in carbon dioxide, which is 12 because there's two in every molecule. And then all of the OH bonds, remembering that there's two in every water molecule. Then we use table 11 to go through and add in our bond enthalpies. And then remembering that it's bronze broken, take away bonds formed. Remember, if you need to, do the little drawing to try and help you identify the bonds, but then do the calculation in one step. Keep every number on your calculator, it will eliminate the errors. Then there's no need for rounding as well. Minus 3,678 kilojoules per mole after we look at the bond enthalpies. Now this value could be less than what actually happens in real life because these are average bond enthalpies. If we compare them to the actual value, we would see that there's a difference and the difference is because the bonds in that molecule might be slightly stronger or weaker. Okay, ozone and oxygen. Ozone and oxygen dissociate and that's caused by electromagnetic radiation in the atmosphere from the sun. Now, ozone has a double bond and a single bond. So that's three bonds between two oxygen atoms. So we say it has a bond order of 1.5. Oxygen has a double bond in one location, so it's got a bond order of two. Now, oxygen, to break apart into oxygen atoms, takes a wavelength of less than 242 nanometers. Now, that's a very short wavelength. It has a high energy. Ozone dissociation into oxygen and an oxygen atom is at a larger wavelength, less energy. So when we have a look at the bond enthalpies, it takes more energy to break the bond in oxygen than it does to break the bond in ozone. So that means we need light of a much higher energy to break the oxygen-oxygen double bond and a light of lower energy to break the bond in the ozone. Because the oxygen-oxygen is a double bond, it's a stronger bond, and the ozone, well, it is actually a resonance structure. It's somewhere between a double and a single bond, so it takes a little bit less energy. Now, what is the importance of that in the atmosphere? 
Well, ozone is very good at absorbing certain types of radiation. Because it absorbs a, a lower wave, a higher wavelength, one with less energy, it can dissociate into oxygen radicals and oxygen molecules. Now, ozone is very good at absorbing UB, UVB radiation, and that's radiation between 280 and 315 nanometers. So it helps reduce the amount of UB, UVB that reaches the surface of the Earth, and that can be actually quite damaging. However, it doesn't block UVA radiation, and that allows that UVA to be passed through the atmosphere and allows for photosynthetic processes to occur. The UVB, which is what the, the ozone absorbs, is harmful and damaging to both cells and people. So it's important that ozone remains in the atmosphere to absorb that radiation, that low wavelength radiation. Okay, topic 5.3, bond enthalpy, some top tips. Make sure you refer to the data book, take care with the calculations, and those drawings can really help with the bonds. If you can't work out how many bonds, do a little drawing and simply just count them. You'll make so many errors if you, are, if you don't do the setting out clearly. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.